of effort. In Climate Watch, we've been taught that the rings on a tree trunk can be used to count a tree's age. But researchers at the University of Cambridge say that the rings can reveal much more than that, not just about the tree, but about how the climate has changed. Richard Westcott from our partners at BBC News reports. This lock in the Scottish Highlands is hiding clues that could help us better predict the impact of climate change. Scientists are searching for them under the water. Swimming around for hours, it's tough, hands-on fieldwork. This is where an underwater chainsaw would be easier. OK, just take it slow at the beginning. They're winching out trees that lived and died hundreds, even thousands of years ago, but the water has preserved them. So, Rob, this could have been in the lock for six, seven hundred years. Oh, yes, hopefully. This was here, died six hundred years ago, and then we don't know how many rings it's got yet, but if it's had 200 rings, that will take us back to the 1200s. By studying their rings, you get a written annual diary of the summer climate going way back in time. So here you've got wider rings, you've got a thinner, and then it gets wider again, then it's thinner and it wider. These represent that this tree was growing quicker and, and slower. We have material for Scotland for the northern Cairnborns within 10 kilometres of here going back 8,000 years. Now we've got lots of gaps at the moment. We're continuous back. 900 years, we have an 11th century gap, which is very annoying. Uh, and then we've got quite a lot of material for the first millennium AD. The width of tree rings can give clues to temperature, rainfall, and some surprising things. Rock avalanches, snow avalanches, earthquakes, tsunamis. You know, if they just come in and just wipe out the whole trees, you can date them and so forth. So one could be quite creative in, in the different aspects of environmental change one could study by looking at tree rings. In a new lab at Cambridge University, Ulf Bundgen's using trees from around the world to create the longest continuous tree ring based climate diary. This is the year 1816. It's also called the year without a summer. In large parts of Europe, it's following a major tropical volcanic eruption. It is resulting in a very, very narrow ring. Just two cells formed throughout the entire growing season that was most likely very cold and also very wet. Using samples from living trees, medieval churches, peat bogs, building sites and lakes, they're already unearthing new dramatic events. So we just recently discovered the so-called late antique little ice age. That's a period starting precisely in the year 536 following a cluster of volcanic eruptions that triggered a very cold period of roughly 100, 120 years. And here's the evidence. A tree ring from 536 AD. The larger cells are frost damage from a dramatic drop in temperature. The line down the middle here is more frost damage, but this time from 1258, when another equatorial volcanic eruption froze Europe. And these thinner rings show plummeting Scottish temperatures that caused a famine in the 1690s. But what about boiling hot 2018? Well, we can bet a beer that I would say that the ring should be relatively wide. Um, it was a good, productive, warm year. By reconstructing the climate of the past, scientists can work out if the warming seen in recent years is truly unusual. Richard Westcott, BBC News, 